Sometimes you're just like, yeah, I did it. When something in a game happens that you just feel good about. Today on Game Ranks, we bring you 10 things that make every gamer proud. Number 10, some type of difficult shot, like a headshot or a, like a trick shot at a really long distance. Like, let's say in Call of Duty, you've seen it more than a few times, but it's really, really hard to do. Like throwing an axe or a knife or something across the map in Call of Duty, or getting a full-blown one-kilometer headshot in Battlefield. You're just sort of aiming, and then on blind faith, you're like, alright, let's do this. And it connects, and you're like, oh my god, are you kidding me? Oh, that's such a good feeling. Like, you want to take a, a screenshot of it and, like, frame it and hang it up somewhere. And just like, ah, that time. I remember that time. Number nine, landing the top ten on any leaderboard. I don't care what kind of leaderboard it is, whether it's an arcade game or Donkey Kong or something. It's possible to still do that, by the way. It would be kind of creative, but it is. Or, like, in the various Sonic the Hedgehog games that actually have leaderboards before they're hacked. Or even for that matter, just if you're in the top ten in, like, a massive multiplayer match, you're like, Haha, <laughs> I was better than all of you. My skills and my effort. Those should be recognized. You should pass down the stories through the ages of how good ASS is at this game. I mean, obviously nowadays they use your gamer tag, but um, there was a time when it could only be three letters, and I would use ASS. Number eight, carrying the team on a kill streak. Like at the end of the game, let's say you're almost gonna lose, then all of a sudden you're just like, wa pow, wa pow, wa pow, wa pow, kill streak. And guess which team won? Oh, it was yours. Or even if it's not at the end of the game, you just carried the team. It was a long stretch where you killed like 13, 14 people right in a row. Nobody even got a shot off on you. And everybody else on the team is like, man, I wish I was that guy. And you know it. And that's why you're like, yeah, I'm that guy. Number seven, pulling off a no-kill run in stealth games. Whether it's Deus Ex, Thief, or my personal favorite, Dishonored. Nothing makes me more satisfied when playing those games than not killing a single soul. And not because I have a problem with killing people in video games, I certainly don't. People who do, uh, I mean, I don't quite get it. It's not real, but hear me out. It's so much tougher not to kill anyone in those games. You have to be sneaky, you have to plan out your moves, you have to time it right. I mean, it's involved to do this stuff, but it's worth it. Like say in Dishonored, you get the good ending if you do it stealth. Everybody just dies if you just go willy-nilly and just kill all over the place. Like, ah, you know what? Here's some nice dinner for all the rats. Carry the plague around, be plentiful. And then the game's ending comes around and you're like, oh, so I, I beat this game and all that happens is everything went to shit. You better believe I was stoked when I beat Dishonored with no kills. And number six, you know, just finishing the game on the highest difficulty. Not necessarily a perfect run through in any sort, just you get into the game, it's difficult, it's much harder. Sometimes the highest difficulty is like significantly more difficult than the one just under it. And they do everything they can to just make that mode a total nightmare. They make it so you die in one hit, or they do something ridiculous like that, and then you beat it. And you're like, I am the Ubermensch! Number five, completing an adventure game like Myst or Monkey Island, or even a newer one like Broken Age or Oxenfree with no guide. You don't get on Google, you don't consult a walkthrough, you don't go, you know, I could probably get through this area a little bit quicker if I just Googled it. Ah, you know what? I'm not going to do it. And you spend the time and you figure it out yourself. And when you get to the end, you're like, yes, that was me. It was all me. And that makes you feel good because you used your brain. If just using a walkthrough doesn't ask you to use your brain, at least not on the level that figuring out all the puzzles and unlocks and items and all that stuff, how it all works to get you to the end of the game. If you do that all inside your head, well, it's tough to give that anything other than respect, my friend. Number four, completing an Iron Man run in a strategy game, meaning not relying on saving or reloading, as in you don't do saving or reloading. Whatever happens, happens. You have to deal with the consequences just like real life. And if you can get all the way through a game like, say, Civilization, or any of the millions of 4X games that came out recently, some of which are very, very good. You know what? Even if you didn't do great, even if you didn't come out with the highest score possible, you made it. You dealt with things instead of just erased them. Confronting your issues is good in life and in strategy games. Number three, getting play of the game in Overwatch or MVP and other shooters, you know,
know, like, basically an honor at the end of the match, depending on what game you're playing. Overwatch, it's play of the game. And play of the game, let's just be honest here, is one of a few things that Overwatch honors a specific player for. But in other games, getting MVP, either through numbers and rankings, or just, you know, doing something that caused the game to go a certain way. I mean, it's not a long period of time where you get to feel like you're really something, but life is a collection of fleeting moments where we realize that we are something. And if you get them from Overwatch or any other competitive shooter, hey, at least you got it somewhere. And number two, and I'm just gonna say this right off, any completionist is going to understand this, but 100%ing any game out there, including all the achievements and unlocks. I don't even know if I need to say much more than that, but there's some aspect of I've seen it all to it that you just can't get until you have seen it all for real. Oh, I have seen some shit, boy. You think that first boss is hard if you didn't prepare right? If you didn't go in with the right loadout? Ha, <laughs> that's funny. I've seen it all. You can't do that voiceover without actually having seen it all. There was literally no weight behind it whatsoever. You can you can, you could do the gruff voice. I mean, maybe you could fake it, but people would be able to tell. Number one, beating bosses without taking any damage whatsoever. You just go in and you kick the crap out of them. And it may be a boss that you had a tough time with in another playthrough, or you may be on like your third try already or hell you might be going in blind however it happens you go in and you absolutely annihilate them And you're like, what now? Oh, you think you're bad? I beat you. I beat you without getting hit. You are not bad. I, oh, I'm bad. What makes you super stoked and proud as hell of yourself as a video game player? It's bragging time. Get down in the comments. This is the time we don't want any humbleness at all, okay? No humbleness. If you enjoyed this video, please click like. And if you're not subscribed, now is a great time to do so. We upload brand new videos every single day of the week. The best way to see them first is a subscription. As always, we thank you very much for watching this video. I'm Falcon. You can follow me on Twitter at FalconTheHero. And we'll see you next time right here on GameRanks.